Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 ACTFL Professional Awards Ceremony. Following two years of virtual celebrations, I am thrilled to join you here in Boston as we recognize outstanding achievement in, language, in the language education profession. It is important that we take time to reward those who make significant contributions to language teaching and learning, and I know that you will be as impressed by the members as the members of our selection committees were by the accomplishments of tonight's awardees. As we begin these presentations, it's a pleasure for me to recognize the ACTFL Board of Directors, who work hard to ensure that this organization is representing the language profession and meeting the needs of our members. Please stand. ACTFL Board members. Please help me thank them for their hard work. I would especially like to express appreciation to ACTFL President Victoria Russell for her leadership. Victoria's untiring dedication helped to launch a host of new initiatives this year, including a Critical Conversations virtual webinar series that has sparked collaborations and connections among members from across the country. Victoria, thank you. The National Language Teacher of the Year is a very special award program sponsored by ACTFL in collaboration with our state organizations and regional conferences. I join the state and regional organizations in congratulating once again each of our amazing Teacher of the Year finalists for 2023. Representing the Northeast Conference on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, my colleague, Trudy Anderson, Teacher of Spanish at the Nathan Hale School in New Haven, Connecticut. From the Southern Conference on Language Teaching, Claudia Elliott, Spanish educator at Paxson School for Advanced Studies in Jacksonville, Florida. From the Central States Conference on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, Armando Johnson, teacher of Spanish at Springfield Central High School in Springfield, Missouri. And representing the Pacific Northwest Council for Languages, Christy Senden, teacher of German at Chujiak High School in Anchorage, Alaska. And our newly announced ACTFL National Language Teacher of the Year for 2023, representing the Southwest Conference on Language Teaching, William Lee, Latin educator at Tom C. Clark High School in San Antonio, Texas. We have with us tonight the 2022 Teacher of the Year who has offered to share with us a brief reflection on her year of service. Please join me in welcoming Heather Sweetser to the stage. So much. I, oh, thank you for the microphone too. Thank you. <laughs> it's my absolute honor and privilege to be here in front of everybody face to face. Isn't this amazing? It's so exciting. Is this, is this anybody's first conference since 2019? <laughs> Some of us? Anybody's first actual conference ever? Woo! Can we have a round of applause for our first time attendees? It's so important to do this. This is the heart of what we do as teachers, making these connections with people. It has never been more important than, than today. There was a study that was done in the 1980s that asked Americans, how many confidants do you have? How many people do you feel that you can really confide in and talk to? They've always got your back. And people said three on average. And that was 40 years ago. Today, does anyone want to guess how many confidants on average we have? <laughs> Zero. And that means that for those of us who do have somebody we can rely on, so many people said zero that it's still averaged out to zero. And it gets worse. There was a study done recently, too, that uh, almost one in four millennials report having zero friends. And we're not even talking about somebody you can trust, just somebody to play Mario Kart with. Zero. And then for Gen Z, they did another study that said that 79% of our Gen Z students are feeling lonely all the time. 79%. This is, this is a disaster. This is a national catastrophe. And it's, a, it's an epic pandemic of uh, loneliness that we're experiencing. 
And I don't want to speculate as to why this is. I'm not a sociologist. But I am a language teacher. And this is where I come in. This is where we all come in, all of us who teach languages. We're not just teaching Arabic or Spanish or Latin. We're teaching people how to connect with each other. It is vital work. I never wake up and think to myself, what am I doing with my life? It's not important. No. We are so lucky. We are the luckiest people on earth. How blessed are we to be in a position to help people? Having said that, uh, it's not been easy. These have been some tough years. As I've been talking to people across the nation, uh, it's not just our kids who are struggling. And yes, we do it for the students, but it's got to be for us too. It's got to start with us, making these connections with each other at conferences like this and lifting each other up, celebrating our successes, the wonderful people, the triumphs we've had, but also talking about our failures. It's been tough. We've got you know, students who are on Zoom, who aren't showing up to class, who aren't doing well with the language, who aren't doing well with anything, who won't talk to each other. Our you know, language programs are declining. Oh, and by the way, self-care too. I mean, it's, it's people feeling overwhelmed. And I'll have a confession to make. I was going to quit. I, uh, in 2020, my students didn't seem like they were learning. And uh, I had a student who was gonna, he reported me because I asked him to stay after Zoom and I said, listen, I know you've been struggling uh, and you, you don't you know, seem to be understanding verbs. I'm gonna help you learn how to conjugate. If you don't like Zoom, I'll meet you anywhere. I'll teach you how to do that. It was a horrible misunderstanding. He didn't know what conjugative verb meant is how it turned out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the Dean of Students got involved and I thought, I just, I, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I don't think I can do this. And I thought, I'm, I'm going to hang in there, we'll see. Uh, and something magical happened. And I, I attended a keynote address actually by somebody who mentioned the same struggles. She felt like her students were failing and she was not doing well either. You know, this feeling like a failure, like what do we do with our students? And I lost it at the computer. I just sat, I broke down and cried, because not because I'm like, hooray, more failure, but no, I didn't, I didn't feel alone anymore. Because all of our struggles are the same. It doesn't matter if you're teaching kindergarten Japanese or if you're teaching Latin to graduate students or you know anybody in between. We, we've all had issues. And it's so important to reach out to each other and help lift each other up. And that's what I'm hoping we're doing at this conference. The person I heard speak was Elena Kamenetsky. And it's my great pleasure to introduce her, the 2021 National Language Teacher of the Year. Good evening, everyone. Um, I hope you're all having a fabulous convention. I am so honored to be standing on this stage tonight because this is the stage where we will honor our amazing award winners tonight. This is the same stage where Dr. Keisha Blaine taught us a timely and relevant lesson on the power of language learning and translation to connect movements for change across physical and cultural boundaries. This is the same stage where yesterday we celebrated this year's fabulous five toy candidates, and then we were electrified by William Lee's acceptance speech. That was amazing. And this is the same stage where actual president Victoria Russell shared the inspiring story of her journey and her students' journeys. And now you all may be wondering what I'm doing up on this stage. Um, I'll be honest, it's because I was the 2021 actual teacher of the year. And during my tenure as TOI, I attended two virtual actual conferences and five virtual regional conferences. And I was honored to be invited to about half a dozen virtual state conferences and one virtual Japanese teacher conference in Canada. Okay. I never once attended a single in-person event as TOI. Not one. <laughs> now, let me be honest about a couple of things. First, I was so impressed by the way that all of the state and regional associations put together engaging, energizing, creative, and really super fun virtual conferences. So hats off to all of them. But second, as wonderful as those virtual conferences were, and to me they really were a bright spot in my very dark pandemic year, you know, as wonderful as those virtual conferences were, they can never quite compare to the experience of an in-person conference. The energy of the crowds, the swag from the exhibitors hall, the free wine, and the bacon wrapped scallops at the Friday night reception. And the chance meetings that you have with real people can't really be replicated in a virtual environment. And that's what we're here for, right? We're here for that. And you know, to learn and become better teachers, that too. 
So anyway, back to why I'm standing here now, which is the question that I still haven't answered. Um, after the opening general session yesterday, more than one of the amazing actual members who I am genuinely honored to call my friends came up to me and said, oh my gosh, Elena, I'm so sorry. You never got to be honored on stage at an in-person event, and we should have put you on stage this morning, so we'll make it up to you. We'll put you on stage on Saturday. And, you know, I was, I was okay with not having had to go on stage in front of thousands of people at any time during my toy career. Um, standing up on this stage and speaking to a crowd, a very large crowd like this, was the one thing that caused me the most anxiety during my toy year. <laughs> and when it was announced last year that the San Diego conference was going virtual, of course I was crushingly disappointed, but I also might have said a few prayers of thanks to various higher powers that I would somehow avoid doing exactly this <laughs> that I'm doing right now. Um, so I'm okay with being in front of a classroom of 30 kids. I'm even okay with presenting in a packed room at a conference. But standing here beneath these spotlights with my face and my voice being blasted out on this jumbotrons, let's just say I'm trying really hard to imagine all y'all in your underwear right now, and <laughs> it, um, it doesn't help. Why do they tell you to do that? It's not helping. <laughs> um, in fact, I was so unprepared to appear on this stage, I didn't even bring a proper outfit um, for stage speaking to the conference. And so I'm wearing a borrowed dress right now. And as I was trying, I was trying on the dress and I thought to myself, oh, you know, I really need like a statement necklace or something to complete this outfit. But then I realized, oh, wait, 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 wait. I have a fashionable <laughs> statement necklace. <laughs> Here we go. You know, and, and these things, these things, I missed these things so much. I, this is what I missed about the in-person conference. I love these things. Um, putting this around my neck is, is what makes it feel real to me. It makes me feel like, oh gosh, you know, here we are. We're all together in Boston. We're having a fabulous time. We're learning. We're growing. We're connecting. And putting this thing around my neck makes me feel brave, too, because it reminds me that I have a national organization standing behind me and behind all language teachers, and that even someone with crippling stage fright like me can be an advocate and stand on a stage like this and advocate for world language education, advocate for my students, and be a voice for change. So, yeah, thank you. I won't take up any more of y'all's time because this stage rightfully belongs to tonight's honorees, and I hope that the rest of you thoroughly enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you. Elena, um, it was it was not a fix that the two of us happened to be Japanese teachers and uh, got to be served together last year. <laughs> I promise, but we've sure enjoyed it together. Um, and now let's begin our awards presentations. We recognize the recipients of our 2022 Actful Research Priorities Project Award, which supports empirical research in six priority areas critical to improving world language education for their contributions to advancements in the field. Recipients, please stand when your name is called. Congratulations to Aria Zan Kabat and Paola Buckley of Southern Methodist University for comparing proficiency of novice French and Italian learners online, abroad, and on campus. Kristen Davin of University of North Carolina, Charlotte, Dina Yoshimi of University of Hawaii, Manoa, and William Wilson of University of Hawaii at Hilo for investigating the seal of biliteracy for Native American language revitalization in Hawaii. Anne Hallas and Christopher Hallas of University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire for creative profiles of language pre-service teachers. Vita V. Kogan and Andrea Vivesque of University College London for the effect of task authenticity on second language writing process and product. Mm -hmm. 
Angelica Kramer and Emma Britton of Cornell University for Languages Across the Curriculum, Assessing Reflexivity and Critical Language Awareness. Jungmin Kwan of Michigan State University for Empowering Multilingual Children Through Integrating Social and Emotional Learning into Language Teaching. Emre Chiwusa of The Ohio State University for A Critical Ethnography of Ohio's Seal of Biliteracy Policy and Implementation in Urban, Suburban, and Rural District Typologies. Veronica G. Sardegna of Duquesne University, Eliana Berardo of Universidad Nacional Mar del Plata, and Carolina Salazar of Duquesne University for mediating factors in telecollaborative exchanges among secondary school global partners. Leanne Spino of University of Rhode Island for elevating voices of heritage speakers of Spanish reasons for and against enrolling in Spanish classes. Yu Joyce Wu of Ro University of Rhode Island and Shona Zhu of Yu of Wake Forest University for demystifying L2 Chinese proficiency assessed by OPI, building intermediate, advanced, and superior oral proficiency profiles via CAF measures. and Mei Xu Zhang of Texas Tech University for integrating multimodal literacy into foreign language teacher education. Thank you all for your invaluable research contributions to language education. For the ACTFL Professional Awards, we will start with our Global Engagement Initiative Award which recognizes outstanding community-engaged learning experiences within the world languages curriculum at all levels of instruction. Three programs will be honored for global engagement this evening. I first welcome to the podium Kaishan Kong, Chair of the Selection Committee. While Wen Guo of University of Buffalo is unfortunately unable to join us this evening due to a snowstorm, um, she has provided video acceptance remarks on behalf of recipient, Global Reach, Cultural Exchange and Community Engagement Experiences, the first of this evening's Global Init Engagement Initiative awardees. Good evening, everyone. The Global Reach program created by Ms. Wen Guo is an excellent example of community engagement learning as it connects K-16 students in Buffalo with over 200 students in Beijing, China through a variety of projects. For example, Ms. Guo organized two intercultural dialogue sessions via Zoom to connect her students with 15 university students in Beijing, as well as a seven semester long WeChat chat rooms project that engaged 175 college students in Beijing and 40 community members in Buffalo to communicate on cultural topics. Uh, the global engagement is incredibly impactful for both students and local communities. Their global initiative project was reported by the local TV station, and as one of the former students wrote in his testimonial, Guo Wen's community classes have become a stable in the community in Western New York and a, and a gold standard for Chinese language education in the area. Congratulations. Hi everyone, my name is Guo Wen. I'm from the University at Buffalo. It's my honor to accept the award of ACTFOR Global Engagement Initiative. I sincerely thank ACTFOR and the committee members for considering the Global Reach Program. This is definitely a very proud and humbling experience for me, my students, and my colleagues in Buffalo and Beijing. I especially want to thank my mentors from ACTFOR and CLTA, who provided me with wonderful workshops and ongoing trainings about virtual exchange and global engagement programs. I also would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Malave, and my committee member, Dr. Kearney and Dr. Griffler from the University at Buffalo, who always helped me and guided me with their knowledge 
experience and expertise. I also would like to say thank you to my family in China and my friends in Buffalo. Without their huge support, this honor will never be possible. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Next, we welcome Baird Nelson of Notre Dame High School in San Jose, California to the stage, who is accepting a Global Engagement Initiative Award on behalf of the Loteria Hecha para la Comunidad Loteria Made for the Community. The Loteria Made for the Community program, led and created by Mr. Bayer Nielsen, successfully engaged students in real-world learning by creating a traditional Mexican lottery game for the community. Students in the program interviewed the executive director of the Mountain View Day Worker Center about day worker they workers' immigration experiences and life stories, as well as reading narratives of day worker, workers written by previous students. Using all the information, they created a personalized lotter lottery game that included cultural practices and perspectives reflecting the, the immigrants' stories. The game was given to the Mountain View Day Worker Center and played with the community at the center's 25th anniversary. As one of the supportive letters stated, this project integrated the school's focus on social justice issues through a partnership with local communities. 100% of the students participated and were given opportunities to utilize their skills such as graphic design, editing, and writing game instructions. Congratulations. Thank you very much for this opportunity to portray the fantastic work of my students and the very unique cultures of day workers in Mountain View, California. Adapting to the pandemic allowed us to reimagine our longtime partnership with the Day Workers Center in our community because in-person visits were, were no longer possible. This project brought light to this very unique, fantastic community and allowed my students to use their hobbies and interests in order to recreate Loteria. Uh, Cross-cultural conversations are vital to producing uh, global, uh, global learners. And they allow us to break down that physical and mental barrier between us and them so that we can stand in solidarity with each other. I'd like to thank uh, Maria Marroquin, the executive director of the Day Workers Center in Mountain View, California, as well as my students, my colleagues, especially Kathy Scher, who's uh, sit sitting right there, and uh, to the administration of Notre Dame High School in San Jose. Thank you. And finally, we applaud Zhaolin Fang of River Bluff High School in South Carolina's Lexington County School District 1, who is accepting a Global Engagement Initiative Award on behalf of the River Bluff High School Chinese program. The River Bluff High School Chinese program, under the leadership of Ms. Xiaolin Rebecca Feng, reflects strong connections with communities beyond classroom learning. The program successfully launched multiple international partnerships with students in China, including an international virtual exchange program with students in China Yunnan Pollard International School and a partnership memo with China Xindu No. 1 High School. The Chinese program also emphasizes the value of connecting students with the Chinese-speaking communities within the United States. Students in RBHS have been introduced to Chinese culture through field trips to Chinatowns and visited Chinese communities in Colombia and Charlotte. The Chinese program demonstrates strong connections with all stakeholders in the community and the target culture to foster students' cultural understanding and linguistic competencies. Congratulations.
Good evening, friends and teachers. I'm very honored to receive this award. In 2017, I established our high school and China Xindu Number One High School partnership. The connection was made through the Teachers of Critical Language program funded by the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs of the United States Department of State. The partnership has been growing steadily ever since. This award also belongs to my friends, colleagues, lead teachers, school admins, and district world language coordinators, and friends from South Carolina Educational Department. Their unreserved support is the most valuable encouragement to keep the program going, uh, growing, even during very challenging times. Many thanks to my partner school admins and teachers and students, all of whom are inspired to push themselves beyond classroom walls to a real-time global exchange experience. This award also belongs to generations of RBHS high school Chinese program students. Their passion, creativity, and enthusiasm shape the character of the program, making it meaningful and very valuable. Many thanks to Actifo and Award Committee for their leadership and hard work in setting standards of excellence for global engagement initiatives. Thank you so much. Next, we recognize the recipient of the Actful Sengage IELT Post-Secondary Award for Excellence in World Language Instruction Using Technology. Kusum Napchik of Duke University. Go Blue Devils. I told them I was going to go off script for that one. <laughs> Kusum is unavailable to be with us in person, but has provided video acceptance remarks. This award is presented by committee co-chairs Stacy Margarita Johnson, representing ACFL, and Kevin Gogler, representing IALT, as well as Kim Beitler, representing the award's co-sponsor, Sengage. Hello, uh, the, the ACFL Sengage uh, Learning Awards are presented annually to recognize excellence in the integration and use of technology, as we said. And this year's recipient integrates an impressive array of technologies into her teaching, including tools such as student-produced podcasts, online teaching tools with PlayPosit and VoiceThread, and even 3D printing. More importantly, to the committee members who selected her for this award, she thoughtfully applied technological solutions in order to solve teaching challenges and ensured that her use of technology maps to the professional standards that guide all of our work as language educators. At her institution at Duke, she took advantage of resources provided to faculty, including licensed tools, consultation with experts, and working groups with colleagues. She doesn't just innovate for her own classroom, but she shares this knowledge that she gains through her teaching experience by conducting many workshops, publishing blog posts, peer-reviewed articles, and online activities. For the students in her Hindi courses at Duke, and all of us who are lucky enough to interact with her uh, body of work online, she's a brilliant example of how the uh, intentional integration of technology can elevate both our teaching and our professional development not only for teachers of critical languages, but of all languages. So it's my great pleasure to uh, present the award, uh, the Actful Cengage IELT Post-Secondary Award for Excellence in World Language Instruction Using Technology. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Kasum Kanapsky. Hi everyone, my name is Kusum Napse, and on behalf of my Hindi students and the technology team at Duke, we are deeply honored to be named the Actful Singate I8 Post-Secondary Award for Excellence in World Language Instruction Using Technology. This award means a lot to me and our Duke Hindi community and will give us motivation and inspiration. I would like to express my thanks to the committee for selecting me 
for this technology award. I am grateful for the constant support of Sophia Stone, Seth Anderson, and Elise Mueller of Duke Learning Innovation. I'm also thankful for the actual workshops and conferences I attended that explored ways for integrating technology into language teaching. I hope this award will inspire other language instructors around me who continue doing great work in the field of technology. Thank you so much. I now invite to join me on the stage, recipient of the Actful Nicefelt Anthony Papalia Award for Excellence in Teacher Education, Francis Troyan of The Ohio State University. <laughs> Francis is accompanied to the podium by committee chair Christopher Moorhead and co-presenters Michael Mitchell and Jenny Lynn Delfini representing co-sponsoring organization Nicefelt, the New York State Association of Foreign Language Teachers. The uh, Actful Anthony Papalia Award and the Nassafeld Actful Papalia Award uh, for Teacher Excellence in Teacher Education was established to recognize a world language educator who has demonstrated excellence in the preparation and continuing education of teachers uh, for the profession. Uh, Dr. Troyan has demonstrated that quite uh, literally in his abridged 19-page CV. Uh, and he has done amazing work for teaching preparation in the teaching community. And uh, he is now the fourth member of The Ohio State University to receive this award. And so please uh, join me in congratulating Dr. Troyan on this award. Thank you, and uh, I want to start off by thanking the, um, the committee um, and uh, ACTFL, as well as our colleagues at NYSEFALT, and also want to uh, acknowledge our, our good and dear friend, uh, John Carlino, and the passion, love, and dedication that he um, inspired in all of us for the work that we do and the way that he supported the work that we do. So thank you. This autumn, I've told many of you um, the story of my first ACTFL. My first ACTFL convention was in two, uh, 2007 in San Antonio. As a first time attendee then, I nervously presented an action research project from my classroom in Portland, Maine. The colleagues, connections, and mentoring of my ACTFL community s provided spaces for me to become the teacher, the teacher educator, and the mentor that I am today. I wanted to acknowledge a few people who have contributed to that and know that I'll leave a few out because we've only got uh, 60 seconds and I have um, a, a, an extra 60 seconds from, um, from, from the committee. Um, I'm grateful to my colleague Kristen Davin who nominated me and has supported and mentored me in my work. I'm grateful to Martin Smith um, who in 2007 served as my NECTFL need um, fellowship uh, advisor and really nudged me along in the work that I did with IPA. And speaking of IPA, um, I have to acknowledge the work support and um, mentoring of Eileen Glisson, Bonnie Derhauk, uh, and Rick Donato, and all of my family at the University of Pittsburgh, and there are way too many here to uh, acknowledge in the time that we have, um, but you know who you are. Uh, and I, I heard you cheering earlier. Um, I'm grateful to Gisela Hokero Alden, um, whom I met when I was a master's student at Pitt in 1999. From there, our paths crossed again and again, from Pittsburgh to Maine to Boston. Throughout, you've generously and consistently inspired, mentored, and encouraged me lovingly. I'm grateful to my students, my teachers, the teachers we work with and collaborate with day in and day out, the energy, passion, and love that they give, as well as my colleagues and friends at The Ohio State University. See, I didn't say the. Um, uh, and in the state of Ohio, such as the um, Ohio Foreign Language Association, and specifically Ryan Wartz and Kathy Shelton, who have 
guided and supported and been integral in my community in Ohio. I'm grateful to those students and colleagues and teachers who supported my nomination as well. Finally, I'm grateful to my sweet husband, David, who has seen my work and supported me and tolerated countless acronyms like no other family could and like no one else in my life. Thank you all. Our next award is the ACTFL NFMLTA slash MLJ <laughs> Paul Pimsler Award for Research in World Language Education. And this year's recipients are Holger Hopp of Tanisha Universitat Braunschweig, Germany, and Dieter Thoma of University of Mannheim, Germany. While the recipients were not able to join us in person this evening, I will be joined at the podium by committee co-chairs, Rebecca Fox, representing ACTFL, and Paul Toth, representing the National Federation of Modern Language Teachers Associations, NFMLTA. I also invite forward Robert Terry, representing NFMLTA. Go Blue Devils. I say again. Okay. So the uh, Paul Pimsler Award for Research in World Language Education um, was created in 1977 to recognize outstanding research in world or second language education published during the previous calendar year. On behalf of our committee members, it is an honor to present the, 20, the 2022 Paul Pimsler Award to Holger Hopp and Dieter Thoma for their study entitled Effects of Plurilingual Teaching on Grammatical Development in Early Foreign Language Learning, which was published in the Ni Modern Language Journal in uh, May 2021. This groundbreaking study explores how principled uses of learners' first language in elementary school foreign language classes fosters target language development as compared to classes with a target language only rule. The participants were 258 German fourth grade English teachers, 33% of whom came from immigrant backgrounds where languages other than German were spoken at home. The plurilingual instruction group made comparisons between English, German, and local minority languages while the other group followed an English only classroom policy. After instruction, the plurilingual group outperformed the English-only group on a listening comprehension task while performing equally well on a narration task. The authors argue in their study that plurilingual instruction benefited learners by increasing their awareness of cross-linguistic comparisons. Meanwhile, because plurilingual instruction provided no apparent disadvantages, they argue that plurilingual foreign language teaching is suitable and relevant for all foreign language learners. Their conclusion thus aligns well with actful communication and comparison standards while providing a model for principled L1 use in classes aiming for 90% target language use. Congratulations. Thank you very much for awarding us the 2022 Paul Pimsler Award for our paper in the Modern Language Journal. We're very grateful for this recognition of our research that aims to connect linguistic approaches to plurilingualism with pedagogical issues in foreign language learning. We believe it's essential to view all languages the students have as resources in foreign language learning. Whether it's the native language, a minority or heritage language, or another foreign language, they're all building blocks that students bring to the table in the foreign language classroom. Our research shows that when foreign language teachers encourage students to use all of their languages, they will be stepping stones for the students in learning a foreign language. We thank all the student assistants, graduate students and postdocs involved in our research, in particular Jenny Jakisch, Teresa Patzek and Zara Sturm, and we extend our thanks to all the schools and students for taking part in our studies so enthusiastically. Thank you.
And now, recognizing an outstanding leader at the post-secondary level, I'd like to welcome to the podium this year's recipient of the Wilga Rivers Award for Leadership in World Language Education post-secondary, Dennis Looney, who will be joined by committee chair, Krista Chambliss. Good evening. It is my honor to introduce this year's recipient of the ACTPOOL Wilga Rivers Award for Leadership in World Language Education, Dr. Dennis Looney. Uh, Dr. Looney has been a staunch advocate and supporter for world languages for over 30 years with an impressive record of service. Unfortunately, having only 60 seconds is not possible to tell you about all of his amazing work. But most recently, he has served as director of the Association for the Department of Foreign Languages and Office of Programs for the Modern Language Association from 2014 to 2021. And one of his colleagues had this to say. The Actful Wilga Rivers Award is given to individuals with a record of active participation and outstanding leadership in activities of various world language organizations. Dennis' contributions reach far beyond membership, presentations, and elected positions. Building on his many years of leadership as a faculty member and administrator at the University of Pittsburgh and his personal characteristics as an excellent and empathetic communicator and collaborator, Dennis has spent the final year, seven years of his distinguished career making many varied contributions at the Modern Language Association that continue to impact U.S. foreign language programs today. I cannot think of a more deserving candidate. So I'm happy to present to you Dr. Dennis Looney. Thank you. Um, I thank everybody. It's a real honor to receive this award, and um, there's no way I could mention everyone's name, so I thought I would do this slightly differently and mention the places that put me in a position to be here. The first one was Boston University, just up the street where I first was moved to become a serious student of languages. Back then it was Greek and German. Then Middlebury College, where I went, with whom I went to Italy and spent a year um, at Middlebury and at the University of Lawrence and learned Italian. The University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and now I should say Go Heels, uh, I suppose, where I added Latin to the mix was very important for me. And then, speaking of Latin and Greek, I taught for four summers at the Latin Greek Institute at the City University of New York when I was a graduate student and then a young professor, and I learned stuff there that I still depend on today. The University of Pittsburgh, where I spent most of my career, deserves special thanks, as does the Modern Language Association, where I spent the last, not seven years, but seven years and three, four-fifths of a year, so almost eight years. Um, but all those places, institutions are only as good as the people in them. And so though that's what I really want to remember with gratitude. All my teachers along the way, in and out of the classroom, many of you are here in this room now, colleagues, sparring partners, friends, collaborators, and most of all, I want to remember my students. If only we had a rubric that we could measure how much we learn from our students. That's what I would be very happy to get my hands on. Thank you so much. I'm afraid I've started something with the university call outs, so I apologize. Next for the actful NFMLTA slash MLJ. Emma Marie Berkmeyer Award for Doctoral Dissertation Research in World Language Education. <clears throat> Please congratulate this year's recipient, Tricia Thrasher of Immerse. Committee co-chairs, Celine Rose, representing ACTFL, and Fernando Rubio, representing NFMLTA, will join us on stage to tell you about this winning doctoral dissertation. Robert Terry of NFMLTA will also rejoin us on the stage. Good evening. The ACTFL NFMLTA MLJ, how did I do? Good. The ACTFL NFMLTA MLJ Award. 
Emma Marie Berkmeyer Award recognizes exceptional doctoral research in world language education, and this year's recipient is Dr. Tricia Thrasher for her fascinating dissertation titled Saying Au Revoir to Anxiety in a Heartbeat, the Benefits of Virtual Reality for Language Learning. Dr. Thrasher's research expands our understanding of foreign language anxiety and its effect on oral production by adding physiological measures of anxiety and combining quantitative and qualitative research methods. While the recent pandemic highlighted the importance of computer-assisted language learning, the study highlights some limitations of Zoom environment and provides an effective alternative for oral production practice that closely resembles in-person interactions and allows students to feel more at ease. Congratulations. Okay, good evening everyone, and thank you so much to the committee members. I'm truly honored to receive this award. I'm not gonna try to say the entire name because it's very long, um, but I do wanna thank the committee for taking the time to read my dissertation and evaluate its scholarly contribution. My dissertation was focused on ensuring that we, as language educators, use virtual reality technology in a way that is both meaningful and effective for our students. Conducting this study during COVID-19 was a challenge to say the least, and it taught me how to think on my feet and be adaptable with my research methods as things were constantly changing. For that reason alone, receiving this award is even more meaningful. That being said, I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Aurora Moroz, for our continual guidance throughout this research, as well as everyone else who was instrumental in this study. There were a lot of people involved in this work, from the participants to the raters, to everyone on my committee, um, and all the organizations who helped to fund this project. So it took a village, to say the least. And lastly, I would like to sincerely thank the entire organization of ACTful, and I hope that this research helps inform how language teachers use VR and other immersive technologies moving forward. Thank you. Actful is proud to present the, the Actful Nelson Brooks Award for, teach, for Excellence in the Teaching of Culture to Maria Dattel of Boston University. And accompanying her to the stage is committee chair, Lori Langer de Ramirez. Good evening. On behalf of the committee, it is our great pleasure to confer the Nelson Brooks Award for Excellence in the Teaching of Culture on Dr. De Maria Latel, Senior Lecturer in Spanish at Boston University. Dr. Latel impressed the committee with her accomplishments in both her university role and as a workshop presenter in local and national conferences. In fact, she just presented an amazing session in this very room right before this award ceremony. Doctora Datel's work focuses on the incorporation of different identities and backgrounds in the teaching of world languages and the representation of overlooked experiences and topics. She has designed courses to center the voices of indigenous peoples throughout the Spanish-speaking world and has created anti-racist cultural content for her students. Her website contains teaching materials that encourage intercultural connections and critical thinking about racism from a global perspective. She has also done important work in exploring gender inclusive and non-binary language in the teaching of Spanish and organized the conference on the teaching of students with disabilities. Dr. Datel has accomplished so much in a relatively brief period of time. We are pleased to award her with this honor and excited to watch as she continues this important diversity, equity, and inclusion work for the benefit of all learners in our K-16 language classrooms. Thank you so much, Akful. I'm honored to be the recipient of the Nelson Brooks Award, and it's uh, great to be recognized for something that I'm passionate about. 
Over the past 24 years of teaching language and culture, I have worked to amplify the voices who are uh, excluded from hegemonic narratives and build a diverse and inclusive curriculum that represents all the students in the classroom. These awards really belong to my colleagues at Boston University, my mentors, my mentor Gisela, who is here tonight, uh, because my career started the day uh, I gave my first professional um, presentation and she told me, Maria, you are a natural. <laughs> and so my friends uh, in the Roman studies, world language and literatures, and Latin American studies, and my colleagues in the anti-racist fellowship, because the fight against white supremacy is never an individual, but rather a collective one. Thank you so much. Please now join me in welcoming to the podium the recipient of the Actful IALT Award for Excellence in World Language Instruction Using Technology, K through 12, Maureen Gassert Lamb of the Ethel Walker School in Connecticut. She will be joined by committee co-chairs, Sarah Chow representing ACTFL and Natalie Etskivoglu representing the awards co-sponsor, IALT. This award is presented to recognize excellence in the integration and use of technology in world language instruction at the K-12 level. On behalf of the award committee, it is our honor to congratulate this year's award winner, Maureen Lam. Maureen teaches Latin and is the Dean of Academic Technology and Innovative Pedagogy at Ethel Walker School in Simsbury, Connecticut. Maureen is dedicated in, to creating an inclusive classroom environment using technology to enhance the student experience and making classics comprehensible to her students. Her app smashing brings Latin to life. Her colleagues share Maureen has the perfect cocktail of skills, abilities, and passions. She is abundantly knowledgeable about the world of Latin, the world of the internet, and the world of her kids. Maureen presents at regional and national conferences since the pandemic. Maureen taught free educator workshops and webinars. Maureen's web website has a plethora of resources from the video tutorials to blogs on innovative technology use in the classroom. A nominator shared, Maureen embodies the spirit of leading teachers on their instructional technology journey with enthusiasm and passion. Congratulations, Maureen. Thank you so much. I am just tremendously honored and grateful to be here and oh my goodness, this is amazing. And I just wanna, I wanna thank everybody, but yeah, <laughs> let, me, let me go to some specifics. I'd love to thank my, first my colleagues at Ethel Walker and at Kingswood Oxford who supported me in this, especially my um, the people who nominated me, Dan Gleason, Elisa Kirschhofer, and Samantha Radovich. I would love to thank my colleagues at ACL, um, the committee at ACTFL, thank you so much. My colleagues at Idioma, and I'm also so grateful for my students. So many of the things I do with technology are based on feedback that I received from my students about how to make the classroom more inclusive and accessible for them. And so I'm incredibly grateful to them. Um, thank you so much. And also a quick thank you to my family for supporting me and my dad who taught me everything I know about technology. So <laughs> thank you so much. Next is the ACTFL Melba D. Woodruff Award for Exemplary Elementary World Language Program, this year bestowed upon Greendale Schools of Wisconsin. Please welcome to the podium Teresa Krushki Alfonso, accompanied by teachers from the Greendale Schools Elementary Program, who will re receive the award on behalf of their district along with committee chair Jenny Lynn Delfini. Elementary language instruction is a special beast. In short windows of opportunity, teachers deliver language and culture in a fun way which inspires enthusiasm for more. Elementary world language teachers are always on, 
delivering content and offering their students a glimpse at the vast world outside their classroom, all while speaking a new language and often starting with preliterate students. The Greendale teachers have committed to doing all this. They collaborate to make their units and lessons the best they can be. They gather data and feedback from the students and parents. And through outreach and advocacy, they have made their elementary, they have made their elementary Spanish program a vital part of the student's day and a vital part of the culture of the school in general. As an elementary teacher, my own love of teaching was renewed when I read of their hard work for their program's success. It's a pleasure, it was a pleasure to read their application and a joy to honor them with the Woodruff Award. As the curriculum facilitator of Four World Language, it is with great pride that I accept this award on behalf of Greendale Schools. First, thank you to ACTFL for recognizing quality elementary language programs. They are so very important. Thank you to our superintendent, Dr. Kim Amidzik, for supporting languages. And thank you to our elementary team, present and past, and thank you to Helena Curtin, not only for nominating us, but for her constant support along the way. Jessica Bradley, Carol Hartman, and Katie Delamont are on stage to help me accept this award. We established the K-5 Spanish program in 2009 to foster strong global citizenship. Just like raising a child, a quality elementary program takes a village. We are fortunate to have the collaboration, present and past, to create a quality, thematic, standards and proficiency-based program. We are proud to accept this award in the name of not just our program, but for all elementary programs that are making a difference in children's lives. We are pleased to include in our ACTFL ceremony the National Network for Early Language Learning NEL Award for Outstanding Support of Early Second Language Learning. For this presentation and some special remarks, we welcome to the stage NEL President Andrea Boyd. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Today, I would like to pay tribute to a great woman and remarkable educator, Janet Glass, whom we lost this year. Janet Glass was a foreign language educator known for her work in foreign language methodology and second language acquisition theory. Janet Glass began her career as a student at Binghamton University, where she obtained a Bachelor of Arts in Spanish in 1967. She later earned a Master's of Science in Education at Queens College, City University of New York. In 1973, she started her work as a Spanish teacher with Junior High School 189 in Queens, New York. From 1985 to 2013, she taught at Dwight Engel High School. She served as an adjunct professor of foreign language methodology and second language acquisition theory at Rogers New Jersey City University and Farley Dickinson University. Her work focused on the ways multiculturalism results from the study of the culture and language at an early age when attitudes are being shaped in a child and its effects on wider communication, cognitive flexibility, and inhaled self-esteem. In Janet's honor, the Janet Glass Fund Award was established in, 20, uh, in 2022 to help elementary language teachers from Janet's home state of New Jersey attend the ACTFL Convention and World Languages Expo. This year, the Janet Glass Fund recipients are Christine Jaglone, Viviana O'Farrell, Patricia Craig, and Catherine Morg. Now, I'd like to call to the stage the 2022 recipient of the Nell Award, uh, Kate Carter of South Windsor Public Schools, Connecticut.
Dr. Kate Carter has been the superintendent of schools of South Windsor for over a decade and has been a loyal advocate of early language learning. Previously principal of Hopewell Elementary School in Glastonbury, Connecticut, Dr. Carter experienced firsthand the benefits of an early language program for students and the community. Dr. Carter brought this firsthand experience to South Windsor and included the exploration of early start language programming in the South Windsor Public Schools Strategic Plan 2015 through 2018. In addition, her efforts to ensure that language teachers are supported, ensuring conference attendance by covering registration, travel expenses, and sub coverage, demonstrates that early language learning is a priority and early language teachers are valued, respected, and supported. Congratulations. I am honored and humbled to accept this wonderful recognition on behalf of the hardworking teachers who comprise the World Language Department of South Windsor Public Schools. I w it was incredibly kind of Karen Stoy, our amazing curriculum leader for World Languages, and Rebecca Aubrey, an outstanding middle school teacher and ACFL's 2019 Teacher of the Year to nominate me. But they and all of their colleagues are the ones who truly deserve the credit for bringing our comprehensive world language program to fruition. I am proud to be their champion as it is their dedication, passion, and talent that allowed for the expansion of our world language program. Finally, I want to thank all of the educators in the room tonight for the powerful work you do for the children and families in your communities. Language acquisition is a way to forge cross-cultural connections, break down barriers, and bring people of diverse backgrounds together to form the rich tapestry that is the American experience. To all of the teachers and school leaders in this room, please know what you do matters. You inspire others, and the world is a better place because of you. Thank you. This year, we have the great honor of recognizing not one, but two recipients of the ACFL Florence Steiner Award for Leadership in World Language Education. I first invite to the podium Angelica Becker of Carmel High School in Indiana and committee chair Omar Rashid. Good evening, everyone. It is my honor on behalf of the committee to announce that we unanimously decided to award the 2022 Florence Steiner Award for Leadership in World Language Education to Angelica Becker. What stood out in her nomination were her collaborative nature and the generosity of her time. She has really made an impact locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally throughout her dedication and leadership in teaching German. Having co-authored a plethora of teaching materials and collaborated transatlantically with classroom teachers, Angelica is known near and far for her work across levels and institutions from leadership and professional associations to working and dedicating time to publishing companies in creating better educational materials for students of the German language. She is beloved by students, admired by colleagues, and respected by several professional organizations in the service of language teaching and learning. A few words from her students stressed how thankful they were for her dedication. And a few words from educators shared how responsive she was and the mentor-like spirit she embodied in her communication. Angelica Becker is this year's recipient of the Florence Steiner Award for Leadership in World Language Education due to the commitment she has to lead in the field of German language education with generosity and collaboration. Okay. Thank you. Wer hätte das gedacht? 
I would have never thought that I would be up here and that I would be a leader in our profession. But something happened and the brainchild of Helene Zimolo, the trained off program, class of uh, 2001. Hi, Christy. Uh, uh, what this program did, it put uh, young professionals, younger professionals together with a buddy together in a system that gave us the opportunity to shine, the opportunity to learn, and the confidence to become leader in our profession. Uh, and I also, in our group, I met John Carlino. Uh, John and I were buddies from day one. We spent a summer in Germany, and we ended up in the same working group all the time because we had the same interest. Coming back to the United States, we called each other for support, and we helped each other become the leaders that uh, I am right now and that John was. I later found out, too, that we, at one point, uh, were running against each other for a position. I voted for John. He voted for me. John, I did, I did win, so. <laughs> anyway. If somebody calls on you to become a leader, to take a leadership position, they see something in you that you might not see. So take it on and serve the profession. Thank you very much. I join Omar in now calling forward Joanne O'Toole and Jenny Lynn Delfini, who will present a special posthumous Steiner Award in recognition of our dear friend and colleague, John Carlino, whom our community lost earlier this year. We are honored to be joined this evening by John's husband, Larry Levin, to accept this award. Please join me in welcoming them to the stage. So good evening, everyone. I would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to ACTFL and its award committee for recognizing our beloved friend and colleague, John Carlino, with the Florence Steiner Award for Leadership in Foreign Language Education, and to current NYSA felt president, Jenny Delfini, for shepherding this unique nomination from a conversation in the hallway at NECTFL to its successful submission to ACTFL. For those of you who may not know, but I think you know by now, John passed away in January of this year. The loss and absence of our dear friend, colleague, leader, and boss, as Jenny would say, has been profound. This award allows us to continue to celebrate an extraordinary leader and an extraordinary life. John was an extraordinary leader for so many reasons. He was keenly intelligent and hardworking. He was a visionary and a passionate advocate. He was a mentor and a teacher. He brought people together and he elevated them. He worked quietly behind the scenes so others could shine. Our profession and those of us lucky enough to have been touched by John Carlino will continue to shine, continue to shine on because of him, who he was, and all that he did. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for honoring and celebrating John with the Florence Steiner Award for Leadership. Good evening. I'm honored to be here tonight, surrounded by so many world language educators and experts. Our son Ian and I used to joke with John that ACTFL was like the hall of justice for foreign language professionals. Here, people with unique superpowers would come from far off places to solve foreign language emergencies. And I can tell you, in the 30, nearly 30 years we were together, there were many foreign language emergencies. Following countless meetings, planning sessions, dinners and drinks, refreshed and renewed, each world language superhero would return to their community to share the roadmap to world language readiness with all who would listen. 
And in my case, I always had to listen. <laughs> that this is my sixth Actiful conference and my first without John Carlino. And tonight, the Hall of Justice feels a little bit emptier, but no less prepared to take on the challenges of the day. John's work with world languages was always a lifelong passion. I knew this, but it became even clearer as his illness progressed. As he lay in the hospital bed at Roswell, he would muster the strength to work with his assistants to ensure that the upcoming Neptville conference was ready. One day he was sitting with our son and he said, I'm not afraid of death. I'm afraid of leaving these conferences in the lurch. <laughs> Nysa felt and Nectiful, Actiful, were his passions. More importantly, the amazing people who made up those organizations meant so much to him. A few years ago, John and the Nice of Health team established a fund called $100,000 for 100 Years, a fund that would help support teachers and teacher training long after John or that board were gone. At that time, John wrote, Nice of Health has played an integral role in our personal and professional experiences as teachers and leaders and the world of foreign language profession. Through Nicefelt, we have forged lifelong friendships with colleagues across the state, nation, and even the world. Through this powerful network, we have become critical players in the decisions that affect the direction of world language education. Prior to his death, John was asked if he would consider allowing the fund to be renamed the John D. Carlino Legacy Fund. If you knew John, it took a while, but he agreed. I'm thrilled to be able to share that during the Nice the Felt Conference in October, it was announced that the John D. Carlino Legacy Fund had not only met the $100,000 goal, but surpassed it. John would be so humbled by being presented the Florence Steiner Award for Leadership in World Language Education this evening. Understanding the many and powerful ways that Florence Steiner inspired a generation of world language teachers it only seems fitting that John sit, al sit alongside her and Angela tonight. I can honestly say that this was never work for John. It was always a deep and personal passion. Language propelled John from his small town of Warsaw, New York to Paris and beyond. Language allowed him entry into places and to connections with people that profoundly changed him and those he met. Tomorrow would have been John's 55th birthday. What a lovely gift. Happy birthday, John. Over the past 10 months, I have sought solace in poetry. I want to share one this evening, a poem by W.S. Merwin, who wrote the poem Separation. Your absence has gone through me like thread through a needle. Everything I do is stitched with its color. Tonight, I can see John's color stitched broadly here. Thank you for inviting me and for remembering and honoring John. I wish each of you world language superheroes continued success. Thank you very much. And for our final presentation this evening, an award that the Actful Board of Directors presents annual, annually to a supporter of the language profession, the Edwin Sadesky Award for Support for Language Education. Our 2022 recipient is Leslie Harper of the National Coalition of Native American Language Schools and Programs. 
While Leslie is not able to join us in person, she has sent provided video remarks. I invite ACTFL's amazing executive director, Howie Berman, to join me at the podium to present this award. I knew I did not want to go last. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jessica. It is an honor to present this award that was first established in 1987 uh, to recognize individuals who have developed ties between international business, language education, and international studies. Today, the Sadesky Award honors the accomplishments of a broad range of distinguished policymakers, public servants, business leaders, and other education advocates. An enrolled member of the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe, our 2022 recipient, Leslie Harper, currently serves as president of the National Coalition of Native American Language Schools and Programs, a group that advocates for the use of indigenous languages as the medium of instruction in community-led schools and programs across 17 states and U.S. territories. She has also served as co-founder, director, and educator at the Nigane Ojibwe Moen Immersion School at Leech Lake, and she has contributed to the America's Languages Working Group of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, as well as the U.S. Department of Education's Every Student Succeeds Act Implementation Committee. We thank Leslie for her unwavering leadership as an educator and community member, her tireless advocacy for Native American language revitalization in Minnesota and across the United States, her dedication to expanding accessibility to indigenous language education for students and adult learners alike, and her undeniable passion for the Ojibwe language. On behalf of the ACTFL board and its membership, it's a pleasure to congratulate Leslie Harper on receiving this distinguished award. I'm honored to accept the 2022 ACTFL Edwin Sudeki Award for support for language education. Hundreds of unique, entirely distinct Native American languages predate this country that we now call America. American Indian tribal languages, Native Hawaiian language, Alaska Native languages, these are the original languages of this land. They're not foreign languages. There's not a foreign country to which one travels to study or speak these languages. They only exist right here on the original homelands of the peoples of this country. Wherever we go in America, we're on native lands. Native Americans endured centuries of genocidal policies intended to erase our languages and lifeways, and it very nearly worked. In thousands of years on our homelands here, I am in the first generation of my own people who did not speak Ojibwe as my first language. Thousands of years. So connecting to my own family and to my own people through strengthening our language is what drives me every day to support my own community and others, to dismantle barriers built into the American systems, and defend our right to live in our languages alongside all other world languages. I'm grateful to my colleagues across the country in the National Coalition of Native American Language Schools and Programs, people who are doing momentous work to upend and recreate learning systems and who are frontline advocates in policy arenas. In Chi Kenda Megayeko, I'm happy to stand with ACTFL to promote expansion of language learning and teaching that honors the longevity and the existence of our languages today and into the future. Miigwech, miigwech, mi you, thank you. Let's have a final round of applause for the incredible educators, colleagues, and friends recognized this evening. From our outstanding, 
from our outstanding nominators and volunteer committee members to the candidates and tonight's recipients, I would like to thank everyone for your contributions to our field and to ACTFL's professional awards program. It is a joy to celebrate your inspiring efforts. Our nomination period will reopen in spring 2023, and I encourage each of you to consider taking the lead, the lead in recognizing one of your outstanding colleagues. In closing, I ask that all recipients and those accepting awards on behalf of others to please gather at the side of the stage for a quick group photo. Thank you.